gentlemen. What are you going to do with that? Yeah, we're we're going to talk about America. Easy cheese. Is that America. the flavored one? It is. It is. Cheddar Easy cheese. Bacon. Cheddar and bacon. I thought so we this was sent to us by, uh, by Jeff Estes, who is the, the linchpin, kingpin man behind the wheel of the Durango Bicycle Company. He sent us Durango Blackjack to test. They do everything a little bit differently. It's, uh, frames are made in America. He really places a pretty big emphasis on American-made components where he can uh, and, and sell direct, direct to customer. There, as he puts it, no middleman. And, and it's really sort of a communication process. It's a much more, for lack of a better word, intimate way of buying a bike. So if you want to get one of their bikes, you go to their website, you look at which model you want, and then you send them an email saying which bike you're interested in, and that kind of begins this dialogue, and then you end up with a bike. To that end, what we've got, Durango Blackjack, which is their interpretation of, as he put it, a 29-inch trail bike, although it's 29 and 27.5 plus compatible, boost spacing, aluminum frame, a relatively horse link kind of rear suspension with 120 millimeters travel, 130 millimeters travel up front, and it's decked to the gills. Mm -hmm. SRAM Eagle X01 drivetrain, uh, guide RSC brakes, uh, Pike RCT3, RCT3 fork, uh, Monarch debonair shock, Chris King headset, Thompson, uh, Thompson stem, Thompson bars, Thompson dropper, dropper post, post, SDG saddle. It's really nice spec for, as tested, 6,600 bucks. If you were looking at that on, say, a West Coast carbon fiber manufacturer of, of high fashion bikes at the moment, you'd be looking at about 10 grand. Yeah, we are. So that, yeah. all that said, let's talk about the bike. That was a pretty yeah. cheesy intro. <laughs> what did you guys Some think of jokes. it? Bad humor. Uh, I didn't expect to like it. <clears throat> I mean, why not? Uh, I think because it doesn't look svelte and pretty and necessarily like a modern bike. Right? It's got really big pivot hardware that's very visible and the linkage isn't super clean looking and yeah. the machining isn't it's you can see all the machining. Yeah, to your point. And I totally right. But Estes would probably consider that a point of pride, though. Absolutely. If and you I, ask him about that, he'd be like, "Fucking right, that's exactly what I want to achieve with this yeah, bike." Yeah. You, know? you break For a sure. pivot bolt, you can go buy one. But so it doesn't look like the really nice riding. I felt efficient <clears throat> climbing, and had, like really fun descending bike that I found it to be on the trail. Oh. I thought I thought it was the best pedaling uphill bike that I rode so far. When you're in the saddle, I just thought there was endless traction. I was climbing stuff I didn't expect to get up when I was rolling into it. And man, descending, I love this bike. Really? Yeah, I, did, I mean, it's, it doesn't feel all that steep in the front end. Um, it's not. It's, it's not. Six, for 29 inch wheels that are on it right now, it's a mm -hmm. 67 and a half degree head angle. Mm -hmm. He lists it as a 70 and a half degree seat angle. I thought, I thought those really nice short stays made it really snappy on the descents, combined with that steeper Relatively steeper head tube angle is just super maneuverable. It went exactly where I wanted it to go. Uh, and I felt like the short stays were helping me on the climbs as well. I think they contributed to the amount of traction that I had getting up stuff because that wheel, that rear wheel is just like right under you. Hmm. All your weight's going into the axle and down to the tire. I, I love this bike. I totally blew my expectations out of the water. I, I liked it a lot. It wasn't my favorite favorite bike that we rode on that, on that day. Mm -hmm. um, but it was my second favorite on that day. I sense you're chomping at the bit I to say a few things. I grappled with this bike, and I'm going to say that the reason I had struggles with this bike was entirely terrain dependent, and the other bikes I was riding had smaller diameter wheels, and I just, to me, it felt like if I was, if I had this bike and was riding down Porcupine Rim or something like that, I would be in heaven. Nothing in the numbers suggested. I, this, I think, was just kind of big wheels and a little bit of a kickback, like a, a slightly different rear end than I'm used to. That I, I just, I was just like a, like a fraction of a second off in every single one of my reactions. So I just kept on like boning it into rocks or like stabbing the front where I didn't want to or going to lift the front over things and kind of just like overbalancing. I think if I rode it a few more times, I would be, that would become unconscious and it would be fine. But it wasn't quite as intuitive 
and as easy to ride as some of the other bikes that I was riding. Okay. Mm -hmm. Like I felt like our loop with all the rocks and everything, slow speed stuff, I was like, this isn't really capturing the bike in its element. You know, I feel like you need to ride it anywhere, you know, anywhere on, around Durango, go up on the Colorado Trail, take it on a big all day 29er ride. Mm -hmm. For the amount of travel it has, it's got a whole range that you can abuse it through. And that is pretty cool. Like you could, this, and I didn't, purposely did not look at how much rear travel it had until we came to do this round table. Mm -hmm. I didn't want to know beforehand. I was just like, ride it and see how the suspension feels. Right. I thought it was more like a 150 bike. Right, so it's 120, right? Yeah. Yeah. How about the parts? Parts are I, superb. Everything, loved all of them. I, I was, this is possibly the nicest part spec we have here. Yeah. I Especially think. for the price. Exactly. I mean, with that kind of price, I mean, the wheel set alone. Yeah. I have a little bit, I feel a little weird with the cable routing. So it's, it's external cable really? routing, right? But it runs underneath the down tube shock mount, which yeah. is a solid U shape, which means that even though it's external cable routing, you're still gonna have to disconnect your cables to route everything. Yeah, but. Which is a little bit of a bummer, I think. It's not like you have to go fishing in the frame for them. Right, for sure. Someone, at least someone's bucking the whole internal cable routing totally. nightmare. Mm -hmm. At I least mean, it's not under the bottom of the strand. So there, there are those two things, and then I wish I had a place for a bottle cage. Mm -hmm. And I know it would have to be on the down tube if the linkage is gonna stay as it is, but I'd put a little storage device on there or something. All right then. We got a bike here that it turns out we're all kind of surprised by. Mm -hmm. Definitely worth looking into if someone wants to go like take a slightly different path and to getting themselves into a bike. If they want to have like an all purpose machine that they can do wheel swaps on. And if they want to have a more personal purchasing experience. Yeah, something very unique. Yeah. Yeah. So thanks Jeff. <laughs>